today on Dr. Phil. What are you doing dating a 16-year-old girl? A teen's parents come face to face with her adult boyfriend. You admit saying to them that you were going to get her pregnant. I said I was a knocker up on purpose. He's 25 years old. It's disgusting. Plus, it is perhaps the most outrageous videotape I have ever seen from a father. What did he do to his daughter? What in the hell are you thinking? And where the hell are you when this is going on? I wanted to scare him. Well, you know who you scared? Me. It is shocking, it is volatile, it's unbelievable, and it's all unfolding right here on this stage. Yesterday, with the help of Backstreet Boy Nick Carter, we met 16-year-old Valencia and her parents. Now, they say she's a high school dropout, doing drugs, driving under the influence, stealing, and lying. When I say stealing, I'm talking about cars, money, credit cards. To make matters worse, she has fallen into the arms of a 25-year-old man that her parents cannot even stand to be around. Here's what happened yesterday. My 16-year-old daughter, Valencia, has been expelled from three Catholic schools. She smokes marijuana. She takes Klonopin, Xanax, and she likes Molly's. It's a mixture of uh, ecstasy and meth. I get high about every other day or so. Valencia is heading down a path of destruction. Do you? Get what's at stake here. I, I know what's at stake. I just don't care. What are you afraid of when you hear her talking about what she's doing? Truthfully, you remind me of my sister. And I think that if she was still here and given the chance that you have right now, you could turn her around and do what she couldn't have done. Well, in addition to drugs and dropping out of school, her parents say Valencia's boyfriend is making everything worse. David is an overweight, balding pedophile who is dating my daughter and getting her hot. I don't look at Valencia, she's 16. I mean, then it's bad, because my baby sister's 17. It's like, oh my god, what am I doing? You could swing a dead cat, find somebody better than him. I called him a pedophile, and he said, yeah, I like him young. You have a 10-year-old in the house, don't you? David began to tell me that I would be lucky if he would be doing me. He should be doing the both of us at the same time. David said, I'm your daughter. There ain't nothing you can do about it. He goes, I, I can't wait to knock her up on purpose. So when you two are crying, trying to see your grandchild, I can laugh in your face. And I just went off and said some raunchy things to him. And I'm looking at Valencia like, you brought this piece of into my life. You're the reason for this. She's been arrested nine times since she started dating David two months ago. He's 25 and you're 16. 16. In a lot of states, that would be statutory rape. Not in mine. Valencia says there are a lot of reasons she prefers to spend time away from home. I'm the second oldest of nine children, and the oldest just left for college. It's hard to take care of the kids every day. Change the diaper, clean the kitchen, do the dishes, make sure they're not making a huge mess upstairs or hurting each other, because there's a lot of them. When I was actually trying in school, it was hard to keep up because I had so many other responsibilities at home, so I'd have lots of missed homework. And and I would have I would work all one day to like get it all finished or make a sick day. Even though I do love my siblings, it's hard to like kind of mother them. But since these are not my actual children, I don't want to be their mom, you know? I want to be their sister because that's what I am. Well, this is the first time Valencia's parents have been face to face for a conversation with David. Now, I, I want to have some ground rules in place here. We so we're going to have a civil conversation here. You can say whatever you want, but you don't put your hands on somebody else on my stage. Because mm -hmm. uh, you can get sideways with somebody. That's a good way to get sideways with me. I don't do that. It's not constructive. It's not productive. And it's not going to happen. I'm here to try to help this situation, not have mm -hmm. it melt down. OK. You're 25. Yes. And she's 16. Yes. What are you doing dating a 16-year-old girl? It just happened. Uh, I can tell you how they got together. I'm not asking you. OK. Well, she just, she just was hanging on the block, and I was hanging out with her. And she actually was dating one of my friends. Um, but don't you step back and look at this and say, Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah I step back at it. My baby sister's 17 years old. 
you know, I, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I don't agree upon it. But when we're talking, it's like, look, you're Valencia, David. I don't know what to say about it. It's not good. It's not a good situation. It doesn't look good. It's looked down upon. Um, are, are you doing drugs with her? No. Uh, I mean, I, I some pot, but I, I mean, I don't, I don't do drugs. I mean, I don't do nothing hard. H have you given her drugs? No. Have you given her marijuana? No. Like I, I, we've got it together. But I mean, she's got got me drugs. She's got me Molly's. She's got. So happy. you are doing drugs. I've tried it. It's the first time I tried it. When she got it, it was like, yeah, hey, it's like. Uh -huh. So you're doing drugs with a 16-year-old yeah. child, and and you're 25. You're right. That looks bad. That <laughs> that 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 looks bad. It looks criminal, to me. I I don't. I'm not a lawyer, and I'm certainly not a prosecutor, so I don't know. But I mean, just being logical, you even agree with me. That just looks terrible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have a lot of good times together and we're sober. I mean, it's not all drugs and all bad things. He is nice to me. He treats me right, takes care of me. He's always there for me when I need him, and I'm the same back. Right. All right, what do you want to say? What can you say? I mean, like, what am I supposed to say to this? Like, like he treats you. He lives out of his car. Do you know how disgusting this guy is? He's 25 years old. I'd have shot myself in the face if I was thinking about dating a 16-year-old at 25. I mean, it'd have been, I'd have hung it up. That's disgusting. This is not a man. This is not a man. This guy has, it, it, he is bizarre. Bizarre? By the bizarre, way, I, I do not live in my car. I don't care. I, have a room, dude, I, I don't care where you a live. Well, then why are you saying I live in my car? Because well, you have living in your car. You must have just recently got out of an apartment. You beat her. Dude, don't even point at me, brother. Don't even point at me. Don't point at me. It'll be over in a second. Listen, Anthony, listen, listen this is what happened. Pops. You no, 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 no. The beat last time her I saw with him, my ring I gave between her. Us. Every time I see you, I can't touch you. That is coming to an end soon. No, not, not here. here. Not it's here, not. but when we listen, leave here. No, not I here, it's right. right. You... You're, you're disgusting. Okay. Don't, be Don't even listen, talk listen, to me, brother. I got nothing to say to you. You're done. Are you asking her if you should leave? Yes. Do what you want to do. Robert, if, if this man wants to leave, show him the door, show him the car, show him the gate, show him the street, and let him go wherever the hell he wants to go. Okay? David bragged to his friends and on Facebook that he had given my daughter ecstasy and had sex with her all night long. In Pennsylvania, the law is a 16-year-old could be with somebody up to 30 years old. Valencia cannot live with me, but it's all right legally that we can sleep together. She's in love with this man. He's going to fix her. Things are better. So they sleep in the car, pop colada pins, and have sex, and do whatever they do. Eat mollies, go for rides, sleep in the car some more. I, I don't know what they're doing, but it must be paradise because it won her heart. It's unbelievable. It's, it's sickening. I asked her to marry me. She'll be 18 in two years. It's a lot of time to work things out. My husband has been pushed to the edge by David. I'd like to break his jaw, like with a bat or a pipe. I would like for him to eat out of a tube, or I'd like him to be disfigured or have a scar on his face. He deserves to be dead. If I was in Nathan's shoes, I'd be flipping out just like he is now. I'd um, want to hurt me. What do you want to say? One of the reasons I found out about their relationship is um, Valencia didn't know, but she had left her, she had gone on Facebook on my iPad. She left it open. And I found that she was me messaging with this guy, David. And David was saying, I can't believe we got that, got that high last night. Valencia has told me, other, uh, until she dated David, she'd only smoked marijuana. From the time that she's got together with David, she is now doing Molly's because those are his favorite drugs. That's what he was doing, so now she does them. And the clonopins, they eat like candy. And she was just telling me the last time I saw her that David's stressed out because his prescription is up and he has to wait a month to get some more so they won't be on any for a while. So this may be what he's saying. Is she telling the truth? No, no, I did not say that. I don't know anything about his prescription pills. I Are you out of your mind? You were telling no, me in the no, car I mean, I don't know. I don't know. You're popping he, his clodipins. I don't know when he gets his prescription and stuff. No, I, mean, I, I know. Even, I, I, okay, I, wait, I, wait, 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 wait. I did take his pills and steal his car. This isn't even. Sorry. Okay. I'm not. Listen, one, one thing that I see people that use drugs do is deflect. And they'll deflect by picking some obscure detail that's not really relevant to the issue 
and focus on it. The issue is not whether or not you know when his prescriptions expire or not. I'm just wanting to know, is this man providing you with drugs? No. How do you sometimes, get Molly's? yes. How do you get Molly's? I get so sometimes, from yes. With what money? Sometimes. Let me, okay, listen, sorry, sorry. you guys have had a really big swing at this. And we've and done no good. And you couldn't have run it off in the ditch anymore if you'd okay. have grabbed the wheel and, jank, and jerked it over there. Okay. So at least let me ask some questions. Please do. Yes. Okay? So you say sometimes he gives you drugs, but sometimes he doesn't. Yeah. I mean, every once in a while he'll have some and I'll kind of like, just, you know, do some, but... Most of the time, I get my own. So what you said to me was a lie. I said, do you give her drugs? She said, no, 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 no. She steals them no, from No, I me. did tell you that I, I, we smoke pot, and I have got pot. But I have never got Molly's. I've never got anything hard. Do you understand that that's a crime? She is 16. You may dodge statutory rape in your state, but giving an underage person, a minor, Drugs, controlled substances, marijuana, alcohol, clonopin, whatever, that is contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Okay? I, I'm telling you this, you, David, listen, I don't know you. I, I don't have anything against you. I don't know you. I think you're making some really bad choices here, but I'm telling you, from my understanding, what you're doing. Is, is criminal. You can't be doing that. No, no, I don't sit down. Just stay there. Are, are you asking her if you should leave? Yes. Not. Do what you want to do. Sit your ass down and stay the hell there. Let me, let me say two things parents. to you. This isn't working. No. Let, let me, David, let me say two things to you. Are you ignoring me? No. You should be thanking me hugely, because if you hear what I'm saying, you're going to dodge serious, serious accountability. Number one, you should be thanking me. Number two, you have to acknowledge any rational person in the world would tell you that you're putting yourself and her in harm's way with what you're doing. Somebody needs to tell you this. And, and I've told you. So, I, I feel like I've met my duty. I, I've told you that because I feel like I owe it to you to tell you the truth. If you want to leave, I will have security open the door for you right now. These doors, these doors are locked. Th these doors are not locked. They open from the inside. Robert, if, if this man wants to leave, show him the door, show him the car, show him the gate, show him the street, and let him go wherever the hell he wants to go. <laughs> Okay? Now, if you want to have a conversation, we'll have it. If you don't, then okay. It's up to you. So. I don't want to fight. I don't want anybody yelling at me, threatening me. <laughs> All right. That's fair. That's fair. And was not the first thing I said out here was that there's going to be no threat carried out against you? Nor were you going to get physical with him. Wasn't that the first thing I said? Yeah. Exactly. I wouldn't and disrespect I, your show like that. And, I, and no, you, you won't. You, I, we don't I know do that. I won't. I know I it's won't. Just, that's, not, that's not what we're here for. So David says that Valencia is better off with him. Now, he has some reasoning for this, and we're going to talk about that when we come back. Valencia was going out with me. She was a mess, just drunk. Watch her walk down the street, stumbling. She's hanging out with people twice my age. I was running away, ran up to a uh, drug house. It was a crack shack. It was bad. Uh, people were coming there buying drugs all the time. She told me she would wake up and there'd be five people standing there that she didn't know. So, you know, she was a little freaked out. I lived up there for a while, for like a week or, week or so, week and a half. She had nowhere to go to get her out of the crack shack. And I couldn't have her where I was staying at. So I moved all my stuff out and lived out of my car for two weeks with her, fed her, back, went to friends, took showers, and then I found a room. Without David, I'd be homeless. Uh, I'm going to talk to him in just a second, but this is um, it's okay. you what? Nothing. 
Now, listen, yeah. I, it, it is offensive to me for people to make snide comments under their breath. You got something to say, spit it out. It's not going well at all having him come out so early in the show. I was here to help my daughter not to talk to David or work anything out with you or even speak to you. So do you want to, do, do you want to leave? Is that, is that, no, I want my daughter to be helped. Anyway. Well, then you need to let me do what I'm doing. I, I want to be sure. I am sorry, Dr. Phil. This has been a very volatile situation for a very long time. It is very volatile, and, so and, and it's my intent to rein this in. And I'm so appreciative of that, and I'm sorry that we're a little... ...point and make a bunch of threats and well, say no. things that were offensive. I, I just, well, you did, me you and did. him got an argument. Me and her were at it, so it was really back and forth. Uh, now, it says... They called the cops, told the cops, they called them 15 times, they threatened them 15 times, no, that I wanted to, with her, and, and, and this and that, and it was, it's a lie. I did, uh, what I said was I had 17 in the clip and one in the magazine, if you want to come to the house. Yeah, there's 17. In the clip and one in the magazine. No, oh, well, sorry, one in seven, the seven, yeah, one in the chamber. 17 in the clip and one in the chamber. Basically said I have a gun, if you want to come to my house. Okay, well, let me ask you this. You admit saying to them that you were going to get her pregnant on purpose. Yes. You admit saying, I would keep Valencia until she liked it. Until he likes it. You're talking about his daughter. Yes. I, I, we were, I was angry. I was mad. He, he was flipping out. I was flipping out. And it just back and forth. And JC says that you, you have said, No. I'm going to your daughter, your daughter, yeah. your daughter, keep your daughter until I get her pregnant no. and then laugh in your face when you have to kiss my ass to no. see your grandchild. No. Yeah, I said I was, uh, that I was going to, uh, I was going to keep, I was going to knock her up on purpose so she would have to deal with me. And not such colorful. She parents. called you a pedophile and you said, you're right, I do like them young. No. You have a 10 year old, don't you? I never said that, no. You saying something like that? No, no nothing like that. That's a total lie. So that's a lie. No, it's not. Yes, a lie. it is. It definitely is. Did you threaten to firebomb the house? I wasn't on the phone. I don't know. Threat? No. Nope. You didn't threaten to firebomb their house no, with all I've the kids No, I never said inside. I was going to firebomb their house. Look, this is terroristic. This is why he's going to court. So he won't admit it. I said that I was going to keep her. I was going to knock her up on purpose. Uh, I said something about a gun, having a gun. <clears throat> he did tell me he was going to firebomb my house, and he said, I said, oh, are you going to come over and set my house on fire right now? And he said, no, I'm going to wait until you're sleeping. Wait <laughs> until you're sleeping? Yeah. yeah. Well, this, is why you're, you this is why you're going to court, so, I mean, you'd be a fool to say, well, yeah, that's what I said. Did I mean, you say you should be having court. sex with J.C. and Valencia at the same time? I never said anything about having sex oh, my. with your mom. Never, no. Of course not. But on the other hand, you say, I actually understand where her parents are coming from. I would be upset, too. Yeah. All right, coming up, we're, we've got to go to break. Um, I'm going to excuse these two for now. Uh, Valencia says her dad is a big reason she won't return home. <laughs> we're going to talk about that, find out what he does, how he handles this chaos when we come back. Held her up against the wall. Threw me on the floor. Grabbed her by her throat. Put me up on my hair. Slapped her. Punched me in the stomach. I rung her bell. We've been talking to 16-year-old Valencia, her parents, and her 25-year-old boyfriend, David, who her parents cannot stand. Now, at the end of the last segment, I asked David and Valencia to leave um, because uh, I've got some things that I want to talk about regarding this family. Mm -hmm. And it's not appropriate for David to be here for any part of that, and some of this are adult issues that I don't want to discuss with Valencia either. Um, but I, I, I think I've got a, a handle on why you object to David beyond just his age. <laughs> Do you feel that I've got a handle on that? Absolutely. Yeah, and he denies all of that, of course. 
Let's go back before David gets in the picture here. You, you were having trouble with Valencia before Correct. he got involved. Why, why do you think that is, JC? To be honest, um, we've always kind of had problems with Valencia. She began counseling for the first time when she was about four years old. Yeah. Her behavior's always been a little on the wild side, so we try to nip it in the bud early and take her for some counseling. And what do you think about your parenting as a, as a pair, as a unit? How, how do you think you've responded to this as parents? Not good. Our, our, our strategy was uh, we weren't always consistent. We had different ways of parenting. We have different relationships with Valencia. Um, I would always try to talk to her and try to apply logic to the situation. We would take things from her, like uh, took her phone away, stopped mm -hmm. playing the drums, stopped uh, the guitar. Up until recently, it just, just got physical, like in the last month. Yeah, so you've had long talks, tried to reason with her, grounded yeah. her, mm -hmm. taken her phone away, that We've sort of thing. We've given things back, trying to encourage her. Yeah. Um, yeah. Try to be understanding. But you understand what I'm saying when I say that this is a family issue. Absolutely. Yeah. When I, I look at how here. a child yeah. is behaving and what choices she's making, who she's going to, who she's vulnerable to, what whether she's choosing drugs or alcohol or boys or promiscuity or, or older men or younger men, whatever it is, all of those choices... I believe the, the, the poem is right. Children learn what they live. Mm -hmm. And we did an interview with you before the show on tape mm -hmm. that I watched. Mm -hmm. And I, I have to tell you that it is perhaps the most misguided and outrageous piece of videotape I have ever seen from a father. I'm horrified. I wanted to scare her. It didn't work. Well, you know who you scared is me. And later, Backstreet Boy Nick Carter's message to Valencia. The first time I ever spoke to Dave on the phone, he said something. Valencia overheard him. She started laughing. She's like pointing at his laugh. I told my wife to go upstairs. And I just grabbed her by her throat held her up against the wall, and I slapped her like that. And her hair's flying, her, head, her eyes are doing one of these deals. I, get, I rung her bell. The next time David was running his mouth on the phone, I'm like losing And then that was it. I started slapping her. Slapped her, and I kept slapping her. Uh, you threw me on the floor, gripped me up on my hair, punched me in the stomach. She'd have her hands up. I wouldn't punch her in the stomach, but I would like one of these, like a quick jab to make her hands drop down so I'd slap her in the face again. Usually just kind of like go like that. You block my face and my stomach and all the vitals. I was hurting her again. I think I've done that now about three or four times. Because to me, every time there's something new, and it's a big deal type of thing. It's like I have to go pick her up from the police and bring her back to the house. Now she's promising. She's high, you know? I'm like, get down in the basement. And I do that so the other kids don't hear it. I took me down to the basement and pushed me a lot and slapped me in the face a bunch. Put the ring on. He put the ring on his hand the, the wrong way and smacked her with it. I saw Valencia have scratches on her face. Her face is swollen. She had bruises on her legs. I hit her and it felt good because it felt like I was the only thing I had left. Good. Nathan, what the hell are you thinking? At that point, I... Well, what excuse do I have for that? I have none. You did that because you are a bully. Well, I was at that point. You're, you're a loudmouth bully. You're yelling at her. You're screaming at her. You say, get in the basement so you can go down there and slap her where the other kids don't hear it. You said, I didn't slap her once. I didn't slap her twice. I slapped her yeah. four or five times. Yeah. She put her hands up to protect herself, so I jab her in the stomach so I could slap her some more. Are you kidding me? No. That, that what happened. in the hell are you thinking? Nathan, come on. And then you wonder why she's vulnerable to... to I mean, uh, you, you could pick somebody at random on the highway, stop the first hundred cars. She would go with 80 of those guys before she would go home and get pummeled by her father. Where the hell are you when this is going on? 
I, I didn't know at first it was, and then I, when I found out, I stopped it immediately because this is, that is not okay with me. I, that is not yeah. okay with me. And when he tried to do, absolutely not, I won't allow it, and it, does, it has not happened since because I so won't allow it. So you didn't know it. this was going on? You were hiding this from your wife? I thought he was yelling at her downstairs. Uh, no, she was, well, you were visible for the, uh, in the living room. <clears throat> I guess my anger toward David, I was looking at her as the reason why she's doing, like, she is the, I, I'm, I, you know, I don't I know what it is. care she's, if know, he is 60. nailing a marriage license to the front door <laughs> and laughing in your face. You, don't you do, do not go hit your child in the face over and over and over again. Nathan, come on. I knew what I did was wrong. I did it anyway. You, was, you can't do angry. We don't know what to do at I mean, this point. We didn't hit her before. Oh, we don't hit my anybody. God. Do Did you not listen to that tape? No. Are you trying bad. to justify what was happening here? I'm just trying you to... You just said, oh, but we didn't know what to do, Dr. No, no, no. We didn't no, no, know no, what no. else to do. No, what I'm trying to say is, up until this point, this is not how we've dealt with our kids. But he is 100% wrong, but we need help to If you are out frustrated, go out in the woods and butt a stump with your head, but you don't beat your children. I agree. I agree. Did you hear him say in that video, did you hear him say in that video, it felt good? Yeah. That's a crazy statement to make. I, I, I lost my mind. I knew what I did at the time was wrong. And uh, when I said it felt good, it was what felt good. <clears throat> was the time that she laughed in our face. Mm -hmm. And I just told my wife, can you go upstairs for a minute? And I just, I grabbed her by the neck, held her against the wall, mumbled something about disrespecting the family, and then I smacked her. And I remember feeling like that. It felt, I, I know I shouldn't have done it, and then how I felt I knew was wrong. And he sends you upstairs and you just go. What are you, a Stepford wife? <laughs> You've got a wild-eyed man have... standing there, frustrated, what? upset. She's laughing in his face. He sends you upstairs, so you just toddle off? I have no. kids screaming and crying upstairs. I have kids running outside, up and down the sidewalk oh. while we're trying to deal with Valencia all the time. Valencia takes up so much time that at times I really do feel like our other kids are neglected. I wanted to scare her. Didn't work. Well, you know who you scared is me. Okay. You, you scared me. There's seven other children in this home, right? Right. Yes, there is. I, I'm horrified. This is... That, yeah. that you have seven other children in that home. We don't. And you're beating one of them. You're beating one of the eight and telling me it feels good. You're saying, get down in the basement so I can beat you so the other seven don't see it. That well, means, you're, that means you're planning ahead. No, you're... I, don't want to, I, I want her to be punished because she's... There's nothing left That's to That's not punishment. Left to that is criminal abuse. We are desperate and... to try to figure out what to do to make her listen. She doesn't follow groundings. I literally, I go to the bathroom and she takes off. We don't see her for three weeks. Yeah, house... you're scaring me. How, how you is don't that... get it. No, no, no. I get it. No, you don't get it. Because every time I talk about that, you go give me some reason that this is a chaotic and frenetic situation. And given that frame, Dr. We need Phil, help. perhaps it will make sense we why need he's help. beating our daughter in the face and punching her in the stomach. That is not okay with me. I smack my, look, my little kids in the butt. That's the only thing I've ever done. Like if they're doing something And now I have a 16-year-old or... whom I've admitted on national television I've, I've, on at least four occasions. I've smacked her numerous times in the face. And it, I know, I, there's no excuse for that. And I won't pretend like there is. You couldn't drive her more into the arms of this guy than if you were chasing her with a stick towards his house. We don't know what to do. We don't know. That's why we're here. Well, you're going to lose your daughter. And if you keep this up, you're going to lose the other seven. Mm -hmm. Because they will take them and put them in foster care because of what you're doing if you don't stop this and stop it now. It is stopped. We're going to take a break, and I'm going to tell you what I think does need to happen here. There are answers. There are resources. We're going to talk about those when we come back. This family needs a second chance. I'm back with Nathan and JC. Uh, their daughter, Valencia, is 16. She is making some very bad choices in her life at a number of levels uh, and is in a relationship that is inappropriate in every way. My focus has been the fact that these things don't occur in a vacuum. 
they occur in reaction to a number of things, one major factor of which is the family. And when I look at this family and what has happened certainly of late, you're, you're so far behind the power curve, you're, you've lost her. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. At this point, you've lost her. Uh, she has no trust for you. You understand a child, yeah. what they say to themselves in their mind, okay, you're supposed to love me. Mm -hmm. This is the one place that I have unconditional love. I'm supposed to be loved by you and, and trust you and lean on you. And you take me in the basement and beat me. Mm -hmm. that, that's a, a child saying, okay, what? You, you love me, but that you're hitting me. You're, you're slapping me. You're punching me. You're, you know, that, that A, confuses a child. And B, justifies every rebel thought they've ever had mm -hmm. because now you've given her a cause they're a rebel on the run it's right. like I, you know why are you here oh because i get beat at home mm -hmm. right. you, you heard him they're already citing it oh yeah mm -hmm. they're already saying he's she's better off with me mm -hmm. that's what he's saying and you're playing into that yeah two things need to happen you need a break from valencia she needs to get help and it's, it's gotten to the place that it's beyond parenting skill sets. She needs help. She needs to get out of this family situation. She needs to get away from David. She needs to go into a therapeutic environment to try to get her back on track. And I, I have asked Dr. Matt Polachek to come here today. He's joining us. He is the director at the Center for Discovery. And the Center for Discovery is a very successful residential treatment program. Um, the, and it, they really focus on underachieving and difficult to manage kids. And that is Valencia in a nutshell. Absolutely. This is Dr. Polachek. Matt, how are you? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you, my friend. Thank you for being here. Uh, he's been here listening this whole time. Do you agree with me that she needs a break from this? Yes, yes. And we could, you know, separate her from the issue, provide her structure, kind of work on the underlying issues, deal with the drug and alcohol issues, and uh, get her the help she needs. And I said two things need to happen. One, I think she needs to go away. Not so much because of her as you. And you have as much work to do while she's gone as she does while she's gone. Right. You've got to learn how to engage this child, how to rebuild trust with her. You owe her a huge apology. She owes you. This point. So what I'm telling you is we're going to finish here and then Dr. Polachek, and you guys are going to go back and sit with her and work this through. Okay. You do have the ability to compel her to go. Good. And you're going to have to have the strength to do that, whether she wants to do it or whether she doesn't. This is our gift to your family. Thanks. This is our gift to your family. Fair enough? Now, will you do this? Absolutely. If I take Absolutely. my daughter home, she's going to die. I have to get... I was coming well, here to get answers from you because <clears throat> I don't know what to well, do. Well, the answers that you're getting from me are that this family is broken and it needs to be fixed in parts and pieces before it is reassembled here. Thank you so much. Okay? Yeah. All right. Thank Absolutely. You. All right, we're going to take a break. Next, what Backstreet Boy Nick Carter wants to do for Valencia. He's involved in this as well. You know he was here in the beginning. And uh, she's got a friend in Nick Carter. We'll be right back. I want to thank all of my guests today, and a special thanks to Dr. Polichek and Center for Discovery and West Shield Adolescent Transportation Services. Also, a big thank to Nick Carter. Be sure and pick up a copy of his new book, Facing the Music and Living to Talk About It. It was published by my son, Jay's publishing company, Bird Street Books. And everybody in the audience is going home with a copy.
And for those of you at home, log on to drphil.com for a chance to win your own copy. But before we say goodbye, Nick is being joined by Sean Neff to sing Madeline. And uh, so I'll turn this over to you. Thanks. We'll see you next time. I'd like to dedicate this uh, song to Valencia. Um, you may not see it now, but you always deserve the best in your life. One, two, three. Madeleine, what's up with those tears in your eyes? What happened when you shut down and all the amber lights turned into red? In the silence of your cave, you feel safe. You decorate it with velvet drapes. Outside, you see the dark woods, but you don't know there's fields of gold ahead. Hold on, don't let go. Hold on, you'll know that help is on its way. Rise up, rise up, rise up, Madeleine. The sun will come out again. Rise up, rise up, rise up, Madeleine. The summer will come and kiss you with honesty. Love you unconditionally. Trust you and let you breathe. Give you back your dignity. So rise up, rise up, rise and live again. It's only Kid Madeline Whoa, whoa, whoa Madeline Remember when We used to sit and watch from the bridge And wonder where the ships would go Who was there and what they would find out Said someday that this would be a story to tell. And you wrote it in a movie, maybe be the movie star. Someone stole your kiss and took your smile away. Hey, hey, hey. Hold on, don't let go. Hold on, you'll know the help is on its way. Rise up, rise up. Son of Madeline, rise up, rise up, rise up, Madeline. The summer will come in, kiss you with honesty, love you unconditionally, just to let you be, give you back your dignity. So rise up, rise up, rise and live again. It's only a kid, Madeline. Oh. My daughter is messed up. She's 16. She's making decisions that are going to affect the rest of her life. And then the next thing you know, I'm hearing that she's uh, cutting school and she's in the house with some guy, 25. Now, you could be the nicest guy in the world, all right? I never, ever even gave you a chance. Not not this much, okay? Because I heard 25. That's all I knew. I appreciate that you're talking to me. I really do. And it means a lot. She does need help. Maybe there is a future with us. I don't know. But, I mean, you owe my wife a huge apology. Huge. I apologize. Uh, later in the day. To her, right? no, or later, another face, time in life. Our common grounds, Valencia. If she needs help, please just let her go. I don't know where she's going. I don't know if she's going anywhere. I don't know what's happening. But whatever they throw our way, just understand that it's for her. It's not my employee to keep you away. It's whatever. I just want her to get better. All right? I am sorry. I okay. didn't mean anything I said. I'm not trying to mess her up anymore. I actually feel no. I, I've been in her shoes. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you. This is Dr. Uh, Matt Polachek. Nice He's from a program called the Center for Discovery. It's a place for people to go and kind of work on who they are. And we're probably looking at, let's say, 30 to 45 days. Before I was able to have a couple minutes alone, or would 
David? The answer to your question is no. There is something highly problematic with a 25-year-old dating a 16-year-old. Isn't that right? This is your chance. Just say yes. Yeah. All right. There you go. It's quite a, quite a gift. Love you, sweet Love pink. You, Love you. Love you.